story of the Twelve Huntsmen. Lots of stories that involve uh, disguises and um, women dressing as men, men dressing as women, and here's one. There were once a prince and princess who were betrothed and looking forward to their wedding day. And they were living in the kingdom of the princess when a messenger arrived with an urgent news for the prince that his father lay dying. So the prince leapt on his horse and travelled to his own kingdom as fast as he could. And he arrived there in time, but his father was really grieving his loss. And the king said to his son, I have a princess in mind for you to marry, for the union of our two kingdoms will bring peace and prosperity. Promise me that you will marry her. And because he couldn't say no to his dying father, the prince agreed. So later that day, the king passed away. So the prince found himself crowned as king. And after a suitable period of mourning, arrangements were made for the wedding to the princess. And memories of his one true beloved seemed to disappear from his mind. When news reached the first princess, his true beloved, that the prince, who was of course now a king, was betrothed to another. She came up with a cunning plan to win him back. She said to her father, the king, send out messengers and ask them to bring back 11 women, 11 young women who are about my height, about my stature, about my colouring. And the king, a little confused, Agreed. So, eleven women arrived at the castle, by which time the princess had had twelve huntsmen's uniforms made. And so the twelve young women put on their huntsmen's uniforms and travelled to the kingdom where the princess's true love was now king. And they presented themselves to the court, and they secured work as the king's huntsmen. But the king had a lion who realised that the twelve huntsmen were women. And he presented himself to the king and said, your huntsmen are not true, your majesty. They are women in disguise. Here is a trick which will unmask them. Have peas placed across a floor. And that will reveal that they are really not men. For men faced with a floor full of peas will stride manfully forward. Women will slip and slide and fall over on the peas. Now a servant was standing by and heard all that was said. And because he liked the twelve huntsmen, and because he knew their secrets, he told them what the lion had said. So when the king played his trick and the peas were laid out on the floor, the twelve young women strode forward manfully and crushed all the peas underfoot. And the king said to his lion, you, you see, they're really men. And the lion said, no, your majesty, I, I think they must have got word of, of the trick that we played on them. I can prove to you that they're really women. Have twelve spinning wheels brought to the castle and have them placed in a room and invite your huntsmen in. 
If they're really women, they'll be delighted and they'll walk straight over to the spinning wheels and want to start spinning. Now the same servant heard all this and the same servant went to the 12 huntsman women and told them. So they agreed that when they saw the spinning wheels, they would ignore them and they would stride manfully past. And that was what they did. And the king said to his lion, you see, they're, they're really manly. You know, they probably understand the rules of cricket and everything. So there came a time when the princess heard the news that the king's new bride was arriving very shortly and she was so overcome and so broken hearted that she fainted right in front of the king as he was getting ready to go hunting and the, the king was so moved by this that he went over to the huntsman, his beloved in disguise, and pulled off her glove. And there on her finger was the ring that he had given her to remember him by. And when he saw the ring, he remembered his own true love. And he remembered the love and affection that he had held for her. And all those feelings came rushing back to him. And realising that she was indeed his own true love, he sent word to the second princess to say that he decided to marry his own true love and to follow his heart. story where love conquers politics and they all lived happily ever after. I don't quite know what happened to the other 11 women but perhaps they got to carry on living life as huntsmen which was probably um, a lot more fun than anything else that um, their futures would have would have had in store for them. Um, so there you are, the story in which love conquers all. I'm not too sure about the lion. I assume that's just a kind of metaphor for, um, I don't know, the chancellor or whatever. There you are. Love conquers all and women can overcome their <coughs> love of spinning wheels, allegedly. I, I might have told this on another video, actually, so bear with me. But there is a story which goes round and round, spinning, uh, spinning circles, um, um, meetings of the guild of weavers, spinners and dyers. Um, there's a... It's a, a Western aid agency, a Western aid project that wants to make life better. Sometimes this story is South America. Sometimes it's either Nepal or Tibet. There's, there's a village where there's a group of women who are still using drop spindles. And, and drop spindles are, of course, are, of course, quite slow. But they're easy to make and they you can walk around. Um... <laughs> Metal detectorists turn up literally bucket loads of um, the weight, the, the spindle wool. So the aid agency goes in and they said, we can bring you these. They're spinning wheels. Now, now sp spinning, wheel, sp spinning wheels really aren't, aren't in common use, um, certainly in England, and much before the English Civil War. We, we, we can bring you spinning wheels then you can sit down and and it's so much more productive you can get so much more spinning done and the other and women kind of look at the western aid 
it's really kind you know we, we appreciate the thought but we really like our drop spindles because we can just walk around and talk to each other and, and you know and it's good enough for our grandmothers it's good enough for us so they kind of i kind of like that because it's, it's the idea of actually yes being being able to see my neighbors and talk to people and have a community um it was so much more important to people than increasing productivity there you are so you, you can see where the whole thing about spinning a yarn as as a phrase for um, telling a story came from because of course inevitably um, w women would have um, told each other stories or perhaps they would have sung songs together there you are hmm it's the most commonly asked thing um, it's the thing that people most commonly ask craft workers that is how long does it take you to make something well it takes a lot of time but there you are this is um this is hand spun it's lovely and warm anyway i hope you too are lovely and warm wherever you are and um i hope you enjoyed my story and i hope you'll subscribe and um come and join me for some more stories, Grimm's stories, Robin Hood stories, Norse stories. So bye-bye for now. See you again soon.